Hello, and welcome to the second build log for the modular Melody Maker. In the last build log, uh, there were a lot of problems going on with this uh, spaghetti. Uh, I did some troubleshooting. I didn't have answers, only questions. Uh, and I asked for some feedback. And I have to say, the feedback I got was like very helpful and kind of along the line, same lines that I was thinking of too. And everyone was really, you know, nice and wholesome. You know, it, about as good of an internet experience as you could possibly ask for. So now in the second one, um, you know, I'm kind of, I didn't get a lot of sleep last night, I'm a little sleep deprived. So it's really the perfect time to try to, to try to troubleshoot this, I think. I think it's ideal. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extricate the Pico from the breadboard. I'm gonna hook it up to the intended ADC with one jack. And I'm gonna see if I can just read the voltages. That's all I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna do that. So remember how I said I was tired? Um, I may have just recorded this whole thing being like, it's not working because <laughs> even with the stripped down because I had it plugged into input P0 on the ADC and it was doing this spinny nonsense but in the code, let me scroll. I have it set on P1 because that was part of my troubleshooting. And if I go to P1, sure enough, we're getting data. Um, so, and as a result also, just to show you if I unplug it, it does hover at 0.5, so that's interesting. Um, so that is the same, but if I plug that in, we are getting different voltages. I'm just gonna try playing with the voltages a little bit. I'm gonna try up in them a bit just to see if that changes anything. Oh yeah, look at that. It's getting high up there until almost like three volts. So that's working. <laughs> Actually, can I do a plotter? Look at that, it's plotting the LFO. That's nice. It's really nice. Good for the Pico, it's doing its thing. So we've established that the ADC can work with the Pico. Great, good. So next, I guess, logically, the next thing would be to bring in the DAC, have it do the one in, one out quantizing. Um, that would be the next thing. So I will, I will do that next. All right, so now I have the Pico to the ADC, which has one input jack here going to the right pin, P1, which is then um, daisy chained through stemma I squared C to the DAC here, let me pull you in there. And then the DAC has the output to this jack here. Ground is being received from ADC, but it's the stemma ground, so everyone should be on the same ground. And I'm gonna open up the serial monitor to see what's going on. And it looks like it's changing pitch. And then I'm going to bring up the volume on plates. Okay, I have one V oct going into plates and the input to the ADC is tearing machine. So let's see what happens. It's pitches. I'm not saying it sounds good because it's not quantized to a scale right now. It's just pure quantization. So like if it's going to C sharp, B flat, B natural, D, D sharp, you know, that's not going to sound pretty, but it's doing the thing. But we're not getting that ground buzz. So far as we build back up, it seems to be working. Um, the next thing I was going to do was move the Pico to this breadboard like it was previously and then have the ADC here and the DAC here. And the reason why is, you know, maybe, sorry, feather friends, um, maybe it was like all the spreading out. Maybe it was causing some interference. And it'll be interesting too, because like these wires from the buttons are still there because they're a pain to redo. Uh, so, you know, if that's where some of the interference came from, we'll be able to see. So that's gonna be next. So now kind of trying to get back to where we were before, um, the Pico's on this breadboard. Um, it's sending I squared C out to the ADC, which is daisy chain to the DAC. 
but the ADC and the DAC are each on their own breadboards with their corresponding jacks and input here and output here. As you can see in the REPL, we're getting voltages. Uh, so I'm just going to raise the synth mixer to hear what it sounds like. And again, this is just um, basically unguided quantization. So if whatever pitch it's closest to, it's going to, you know, map it to that. It's not necessarily going to be in a scale so that it's pleasant um, from a Western perspective. So the main thing, the main takeaway here is that we're not getting that ground interference. It sounds good in a tonal sense, not in a musical sense. So everything is boding well so far. There was one interesting comment I got where it said that um, display drivers can cause a lot of interference. Um, so I think next what I'm going to do is bring back in the display driver and daisy chain it in and see if that does something. But I'm going to recreate the signal chain that I had previously where it was display driver, then ADC, then DAC. If that has any bearing on it, I think that will be interesting. So I don't know. Let, let's see. Let's see. All right. So I've added back in the display, which you can see is reading voltages. Uh, I don't have the REPL reading voltages right now because uh, when I'm not having it print, I'm able to not have a delay. I'm able to just let it run. Uh, so that eliminates any issues there too. Um, but it looks like it's still reading voltages as you would expect. So let me bring up the synth volume now and see what happens. Sounds the same. So no interference there. I mean, this is good. This is, this is all good stuff here that it's not interfering. Cause I was starting to think like, okay, we got like a hardware problem. We've got like, you know, significant issues going on. So, huh. See, it's almost like it, when stuff like works as expected, it's like, oh, well, okay, now what? Um, so uh, I, I guess, you know, is the issue the buttons? I think next would be, I should recreate the entire signal chain. So the rotor encoder was also connected to this. It wasn't in use, but it was connected. So I'll connect that in. I'll see if there's any issues. And then... I think I might start hooking back up the buttons um, and see what see what happens. Um, I'll start with one and then go from there. Because I, I haven't ruled out too that because I was literally using every single pin on the Pico um, and with the exception of there's like one pin that's weird that you don't use. It's like GP15, I want to say. I'll put it on the screen. It's, it's in the teens. <laughs> Um, you don't use that one. So I like skip that one. But I know also just in general, when you get to these pins, like they have some, some of them have like weird secondary functionality that maybe because I was using it as an output for the LEDs, it was causing problems. Maybe, you know, who knows? So yeah, just to say it for like the 15th time for my sad, sad, tired brain, I'll plug in the rotary encoder into the signal chain, same order, see if that does anything. And then I'll, I'll add in the switches, see what happens there. Okay. And I'll rewire them. I'm not going to put the Pico into here. I'm going to literally go like wire by wire. Rotary encoder's fine. Okay. So I updated the codes so that it's just looking for one button. Yeah. So it's just GP zero, um, LED stuff's commented out. So basically it's just, it's only talking to the switch here. We have the display here. It's reading the voltages. And if I press the button, it adds all the C notes. You can see the array here as well. So that's, that's a good sign. Um, let me bring up the synth volume so we can hear if we're getting all Cs. We're starting to get the warble. Because, yeah, this is blinking. 
this isn't like a steady LED. Let me, this didn't have a steady connection. So basically that warbling I was hearing was because there was a loose connection here. I noticed that the LED was flickering. Um, and when I kind of stabilized it a little, it, it seemed to stop. Part of that is the headers are, I soldered the headers facing up, which maybe wasn't the best idea because I was thinking I'd like use it like with plug headers. So the stem of ports are making it so that it's not totally flush with the breadboard. So that's a thing. Um, so I might actually switch it to the, these kind of socket plug headers. So it's a socket on one side, plug on the other, um, and get it off the breadboard that way. So then we're not dealing with that as a thing. Um, and I'm gonna add in some more buttons. I think I'll do five. So it'd be like the first section of a keyboard almost. Okay, so I have five switches now hooked up on GP zero through six. Um, four and five are used for I squared C. So it's zero, one, two, three, skip two, six. Great. So now if I press this, should be D. Press that, should be E. That should be C. That should be D flat. Okay, so the screen is displaying normal behavior. We're getting voltage in. So let's bring up the synth. It's working. It's working as expected, which makes me think that the issue was the breadboarding, which isn't a bad issue to have because it's easy to fix. So uh, I think I'm going to wrap it for this build log because it was kind of like, you know, let's get it to a functional state, which uh, was achieved. So what will be next is adding in the LED driver for the LEDs um, and going from there. And once the LED functionality is there, then we can start bringing in so that like we can do multiple voices and then also getting into some menu stuff. But I think this is a good stopping point. Um, and I hope this is maybe helpful for folks if you're trying to troubleshoot projects and you're not sure what to do. Um, this was kind of the order of operations I took, just like one step at a time, adding things in, kind of recreating the scene of the crime as well. Um, and that like, you know, putting things in the same signal chain order once things were isolated. So yeah, um, this project has hope. But anyway, uh, that's gonna do it for this video. Um, thank you to the folks who gave me uh, feedback on what you were thinking was a problem. Um, I appreciate it. And my cat just attacked uh, my scarf that was on the floor. It was very exciting. Kind of wish I'd filmed it. Uh, but until next time, this is Mobility DIY.